70% of the Earth's covered in water, and all of that's ocean. And the primary job of the Navy is to keep the sea lanes open. And so you find over the course of history, how did our adversaries in the wars, how did they try to control us as you control the flow of goods and the control of personnel through the sea lanes? If you can't keep the sea lanes open, you can't win wars because 95% of our material for war fighting overseas comes on ships. We can't be a seafaring nation without maritime surveillance. Maritime surveillance uh, is a big part of understanding where your adversaries might be, what they are, what their capability is. And from the times when we first set out to travel the oceans, maritime surveillance evolved with great strides. From the sailors who looked over the deck of their ships to the state-of-the-art manned and unmanned aircraft that do the job today. Fixed-wing aircraft like the P-3 and now the P-8 have kept watch for decades. The P-3 was the four-engine turboprop maritime patrol aircraft. It had incredible range. We could do thousands of miles from a remote spot, carried enough fuel to do 10, 12-hour missions, a full array of weapons, everything from torpedoes to mines, missiles. It had a harpoon missile capability. And as the P-3 evolved, it became the premier platform for not just anti-submarine warfare, but anti-surface warfare as well for enemy ships on the ocean. The P-8 builds on the legacy of the P-3, delivering next generation capabilities in avionics, electronics, sensors, and equipment to integrate with other aircraft and ships. It also brings a faster, more comfortable ride to take the platform into the future. And on the rotary wing side of the equation, helicopters like the H-60 Romeo lead the way on so many missions. Anytime a carrier is moving through contested waters, you will always have an MX-60 Romeo, one or more that is scouting ahead of the group, finding contacts, IDing them, and then sending those down to the warfare commanders so that they can make informed decisions about the movements of the strike group. We play a role called Double SC as one of our missions. It's surface surveillance and control where we use our multi-sensor suite to patrol ahead of a carrier strike group or part of open independent operations on a destroyer in order to see what's in front of the carrier strike group, see what's out there, and then identify and employ upon them as necessary. And these capabilities serve the U.S. well in non-wartime operations. The Marisk, Alabama, when that was pirated and there was a hostage situation, having a P-3 on station almost 24 hours a day to get that valuable intelligence of what was actually going on almost real time was very important for all the decision makers and the successful rescuing of those hostages. We do a lot of search and rescue missions, a lot of humanitarian related missions where we can go out and cover large distances. We have the ability to hopefully to find people in distress from a pretty good distance away and then uh, can go in and, and call, uh, call aid. Some of the MH60 Romeo's peacetime missions are enforcing UN sanctions against certain countries as well as providing safety at the seas where we can also conduct search and rescue missions or look for vessels in distress. And as we move into the future, a new twist on our capabilities as we watch over the seas. Unmanned systems like the MQ-9 Reaper and the MQ-4C Triton are also at work gathering information for the decision makers. Unmanned systems are definitely a key component of the uh, distributed maritime operations. With an unmanned system, you can uh, keep that persistent surveillance and uh, swap out air crew if you have to in, in mid-flight. So we can fly higher, that gives us a large surveillance for our camera and our radar and our antenna groups. And then we have a very big wingspan so we can utilize our fuel efficiency and glide for hours on end um, and not run out of fuel or make the most efficient flying that we can. I really see the manned, unmanned teaming mission coming into play, basically elevating that maritime surveillance even more without worrying about fuel or bodies in those aircraft. We can use UAVs to accomplish that as well. From a maritime surveillance perspective, I think the future is unmanned. We will always have a presence. We just want to make sure that our adversaries take a look at our unique aircraft, our unique capabilities, and our unique people that operate those, and they look across and they just go, not today. This is not the day that we want to cross that line. And if we keep doing that, then we should stay safe and secure forever.